Shalom, it's me again. Um, right here, I just wanted to explain what we're doing with this big piece of plastic. We're about to do um, some more raised beds. I think we're going to fit about four in this area here and maybe two in another area. But what we're doing right now is we're laying the plastic down because we like to build our raised beds on top of plastic. Real quick, let me just zoom in on that little fellow over there. He um, waddle waddle our duckies over there. Um, I guess just doing some diving under, bathing or whatever you want to call that. I just want to catch that real quick. That's my baby right there. But anyway, back to the raised beds. Um, we're preparing this space here to put four more raised beds. Um, they're going to be actually taller than those two over there that we have up against the fence. Um, right now we have little Benjamin. Um, he's our seven-year-old. He's uh, marking some of them uh, to be cut in half. Uh, what we use are fence slats and um, the full length of the fence slats are six feet so we're doing them six by three and so the of course the shorter ends are going to be on the ends to make them three feet wide and six feet long and so we have him doing the marking for those and um, we love to have them help with these little projects it um, gets them involved in everything and um, <clears throat> once we're done building them we're going to be mixing the soil to put down in them uh, to have other places to transplant some of the things that we have growing in the greenhouse okay throughout the summer we're going to try to always have something in the greenhouse that's ready to go in um, once other plants have matured um, as far as they can go and they're no longer producing what we need them to produce for instance the green beans they have um, a certain time frame in which they produce and then they stop producing so we're going to make sure that as soon as that happens we already have something growing in containers or in cups or in little planters ready to go in but again this is another quick video I said um, if we're out here and I'm able to I'll um, give some information uh, just to let you know um, also in cleaning out our chicken coop we always get uh, the chicken droppings that we're able to mix into our soil um, into our compost um, and whatever other organic material that we can find. We mix it all up in the soil and voila, we have our own uh, soil fertilizer uh, to help the growth of our plants. Um, over there we have, um, I think, um, close to 40 little cabbages. Of course, you thin them out when they get a little bigger. But, um, of course, we're just trying to do things right now to where we just at least get them started. And if you have to transplant or thin them out and put them in other areas, so be it. But in the time being, we do have them growing. And I'm going to walk on the plastic here to just get a closer look at the start of uh, these little cabbages. You see, and we've mulched around them to kind of control the weeds a bit. And uh, since I'm here, um, I might as well talk about these fellas here. These are, um, we had rain today, so it's kind of wet. But these right here are the heads of um, onions. As you see how thick that is, it's very thick. It's an onion underneath there. And so what we're doing is we're allowing it to stay in because these are going to seed up for us and give us some onion seeds. This allows you to be able to collect all the seeds you need for the next season so that you can continue growing, let the life cycle continue. Okay, we've done a lot of seed saving from last year and the years before and what have you, what have you. Uh, that's also a part of gardening. It's not just putting a seed in the ground, watching it grow and eating the food, but it's also continuing the cycle of life by gathering the seeds that you produce from the plants from your previous planting season. So again, this was just another quick video. I'm out here and I decided to do that. And while I'm at it, I guess I'll tell you again, uh, right here we have uh, some watermelon um, plants growing in this container. Of course, we just put a lot of them in there and then you thin them out. Um, if you have other containers, you could uh, transplant them um, into other containers or other areas of the yard. And you got to be careful with watermelons and things like cantaloupe and uh, zucchini and squash and cucumbers you don't want to plant them too close to each other because if you do you'll grow some retarded looking um, hybrids <laughs> and it, you'll have to end up giving that to the animals to eat but um, 
what happened last year is we had some cantaloupes too close to some of the cucumbers and we had these strange funny looking cucumbers grow I mean they were real big and juicy <laughs> And but I tell you what, the chickens absolutely love them, and so did the the ducks and our goose. But um, that's what happens when you plant things like that too closely together. Um, since we have watermelons growing in that container on the other side of the fence, there, okay, we have some growing in the um, those this bed here and this one right next to it. Those are also watermelon plants, so we're trying to keep them together in the same area nothing else um, that's viney is growing on this side as a matter of fact in this container too same thing watermelon plants watermelons um, and then we have this little fence here um, if they need to climb a bit if you need to raise up some of the vines a bit and even this thing here you have that um, they're okay next to the to the cabbages as long as you make sure they're not um, as long as you make sure they're not interfering or uh, crowding them out. You just have to watch and monitor that. But anyway, I'm done with this video again. Um, I've been talking too much. i got to get back to work now. We're building some more beds here. So I'm going to sign off and say shalom, family.